tell me about your favorite books. Welcome to the Left on Red podcast, where we talk about the books you love. I'm here today with an old friend of mine, Gary. Gary, how are you doing this morning? I'm very old. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's good to be here. <laughs> That's funny. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I thought when you started talking, I thought you like had something in your throat. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, Gary, you and I go back, I think, further than anybody I've had on the show so far. Okay. Um, if I recall correctly, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you and I met just after high school yeah so we were like just young adults just beginning to kind of spread our wings and and figure out what life meant right yep 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 um since then so like we met and and became really really fast friends and then life kind of changes for you after high school we went in different directions gone on to college and gone off to work in different places and all that right right um one of the things i was thinking about before before you got here is that for me, since the time that I met you, my life has been very different than what I thought it would be like when I met you. Yeah. Is that, has that been the same case for you? Um, in a lot of ways, yeah. Um, like looking back now, I'm like, oh no, that makes sense that that's what my life has been the last 10 years. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> but like, yeah, What if you were to ask me when I was 18, like, do you think you're going to be doing this, that, and the other? And be like, some of the things would be like, yeah, probably. And then other things, I'm like, no, I, uh, yeah, just things would have gone a different direction or happened in a different order or quicker or faster or slower than, than they did. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, uh, can definitely relate to that. Do you think that's the case for most people? Yeah, I think you have a lot of ideas when you're a kid of what life's going to be. And when you're like, I mean, like a young, a young adult, even, um, like thinking about what, what life's going to hold. And I think there's just a lot of things that we don't plan for, but I think that makes it interesting. Uh, interesting is a very neutral and appropriate word. Somet for this, yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> for the situation. It's, sometimes it's really, really good. Sometimes it's less pleasant, but you, interesting is usually always the, is always the case. Sure. Well, um, so in the, the last, um, episode that I did with Kevin. You know Kevin. I do know Kevin. Y you are the first mutual friends that, that I've had on the show as well. Oh, wow. Um, you know, so I, I, I let the listeners know that I was traveling. I was out of town and I'm still out of town. Last time I met at Kevin's house. This time you and I are meeting in my little brother's bedroom. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's it's got a lot of Star Wars, a lot of uh, like figurines for Fortnite and things like that. But, um, you know, all of the all of that aside... It's great to see you again. It's great to have you here. Yeah, it's good to be here, even in this room. I think it's a pretty <laughs> cool room, actually. Yeah, no, it really is. Um, all right. So, Gary, tell me about your favorite book. Um, my favorite book is called The Giver um, by Lois Lowry. There, it's actually, uh, most people have read it. Uh, not most people. A lot of people have read it in elementary school or in middle school as an assigned reading in, uh, uh, from their teachers. And so... But it's it's unlike a lot of those books that have been assigned because a lot of people have really enjoyed the book when they've read it. And that was my case. <laughs> okay. uh, but I was a nerdy kid anyway, so I um, I loved it. But um, so it's it's about this, this boy named Jonas who lives in this community and it is um, they call it sameness. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are same. They try to make it equal and fair for everybody but they've gotten rid of as you read the story you you realize that there's they've gotten rid of some things to make sameness that maybe they shouldn't have gotten rid of he starts to question once he realizes what his life is missing and so the book is kind of him um recognizing the flaws in his community and then deciding what he's going to do about it that's a very generalized outline yeah sure sure so when you say uh sameness in what ways are we making things like fair and equal um so uh, as you read through the the book um there's certain things like at certain ages you do certain things you get a, everyone gets a bicycle at i think age nine everyone um gets um starts volunteering in the community at a certain age they get their job assignment at a certain age and uh and as you read the book you realize that they have gotten rid of things like color but like in general, no one sees in color. 
um, because of everything that goes along with color, um, even like race and, and th- even things like that and like com- competition and clothing. Um, and so they, they see the same, they, they, they dress the same. And so th- that's, and then they also have gotten rid of, um, just of, of music and a lot of that, like your individualized talents that you would normally work on. And, and they, they have a job assignment for you, but that's kind of your only individualized experience. Okay. And even that's something that's like defined for you and and given to you. Your your job job in, yeah okay. professions. Does that present any problems? Um, like people who are more apt to different s- skills or different uh, tasks. No, so in the book they make a really they they make a big deal of talking about how the elders like because the community has elders that kind of run it how they basically observe your whole life and everything that you choose to do in your volunteer time and what you're good at. And so that the assignments are usually, um, are usually in line with what you have shown your, you're willing to do and you, you enjoy doing. And so they like, they almost have like a sense of fulfillment in that the problem. So, um, kind of the crux of the story, the reason that he starts to realize that the community is missing a lot of things is Jonas is instead of being assigned to one of those jobs, he's um, selected to be they call the the receiver of memories, and so they um, he receives basically the memory of before the community existed, of life, of color, of of music, of love, um, and he there's one receiver at at the time in the community, and basically their job is to have the wisdom they to to give the councils that they need to run the the society well but he is kind of the receiver in training and so the person training him is called the giver hence the name of the book um so he there's the giver of memory and the receiver and so he's receiving these this this these memories of of what life was like before the community and before sameness and so the people in the community themselves and even Jonas at the beginning of the story is pretty are they're they're content with their situation because they, they're living in this quote-unquote utopia. Um, but then he realizes what they've lost in, in going to that. So. Okay. And, and he's the... Jonas is the receiver. He's the receiver. And he's receiving the memories of what life was like before this implementation of sameness. Yes. Okay. Um, so going back just, just one step... There, there are some aspects in which things are not the same, right? Because the jobs are based on like your aptitude and your interests and, and things like that. And those are right. distinct, right? Okay. So people aren't like clones or exact no, copies of each they other. They call it sameness though. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, but there, there are, there are some, but like the, the overall course of your life is very charted. You, um, you have, but some of the professions are they they talk about I think they use the word honor they have more or less honor with them mm-hmm. um but they try to not point that out they're they're very imp- they try to have they have a lot of rules about rudeness and about not pointing differences out so even if those differences exist they basically are taught and raised to not acknowledge those differences in any way um like the character Jonas, he has lighter colored eyes. Mm-hmm. And like in black and gray or black and white, you can still tell, right, that his eyes look different than others. And so he has a little sister who who sometimes talks about it. And he's like, it's so rude. She talks about how I'm different. <laughs> and How dare you compliment me? Well, yeah, but I mean, and it's just like, a, and it's kind of something that they, um, that he has in common. There's, there's certain characters in the story that have these lighter color eyes. And that's kind of the sign that they... Um, are different in a in an important way. Oh, it's like a uh, like a what's the word I'm thinking of? It, it's like an identifier from yeah. the aspect of the literary, mm-hmm. okay. right? And, and there's a there's a film adaptation, and it's like a little like birthmark on their wrist or something instead. But gotcha. Yeah. Okay, a very interesting concept. Something that I think you know y- you and I having come from like going to public school and trying to work our way around like social interactions and friends, uh, the desire to be the same or melt into the mass, I think is something I can definitely relate to. Yeah. Well, and just the ease of, of not having to make the decisions. I think that that's another thing that he realizes he's like, it's easier to not have to 
choose whatever but then at the end he's when he starts to see color he's like i want to know he's like it's such a small thing but he's like i want to know if i'm wearing a red tunic or a blue tunic today like it's important to me yeah uh and these choices would be i want to be able to make these and uh and the rest of the community is just kind of blissfully maybe isn't the right word but pretty much unaware of of what they're missing and he was at the beginning too so it's 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 his journey of discovery um and then realizing he has a a greater responsibility than just keeping those things to himself yeah so when it comes to like you know the problem with every utopia is that it cannot exist in our flawed world right like um no no matter how much we try to design it it there's going to be something about the nature of our existence that is going to make that thing not work is that kind of why he at being the receiver he starts to see the problems with with their utopia well and i think what's interesting is that their utopia works pretty well yeah it's pretty effective there's some things that he realizes are really really flawed um and he he realizes that they're wrong but he realizes that no one else really notices that they're wrong and so i think that if if it wasn't for jonas and for the giver uh right then you would never really see what's wrong with with where they're at and i don't think it would i think they could keep doing it i think it is a sustainable uh situation except in the fact that it shouldn't be sustainable. I think that that's what set this, sets this one apart. It's because they could keep going. There's nothing about it that's like... Like the citizens aren't really being abused. Uh, there's there's uh, there's some unfortunate, horrible things that are being done. I don't know. That's, that's pretty spoilery. It's a pretty big moment. But um, I guess if you're listening to this, it doesn't matter. You, you're ready to hear it. Uh, there, <laughs> the one thing that is very flawed that kind of pushes him over the edge of being like, no, this is wrong um is they call it being released to elsewhere in the book and so people who break significant rules more than or like a third time they get released to elsewhere those uh elderly once they've lived like a full life they're released to elsewhere and uh newborn babies or babies that aren't um that aren't like measuring up there's a baby that can't sleep through the night and then there's another one after like Oh, being over a year old he's just fussy and then there's another one where there's twins that are identical and to c- prevent confusion and h- because there's not other twins they want to be the same they have to like they release one of the babies to elsewhere based on which one weighs the most uh and which one is not flourishing as much so I mean, in the end you realize that being released to elsewhere is actually being killed um sure and so at the beginning you, you think that it's just like and they're like taken somewhere out into the community and they they keep on living their lives and they <laughs> taking uh, them out to the farm yeah and so as i was reading it I, I read this again yesterday actually just to like refresh my my memory and so as an adult and having read it before it's pretty clear when they're talking about being released to elsewhere you're like mm, no they're killing them but <laughs> as a kid as when a lot of people read this for the first time you don't really get it till he gets it and i just remember that sure. being really impactful and um, and even now reading the scene where he, um, he kind of brings it up to the giver. He still, it's, he's been in training for a while and he just never, he'd, he'd been given the memories of, of death of like, cause oh my gosh. I mean, cause they, they don't, they hide all that from, from them. Right. So they don't really see death and they don't really feel pain. Uh, they suppress, there's like pain suppressors and even like uh sexual attraction. They take like a pill to suppress their, their emotions. They call them the stirrings. <laughs> okay. Um, the stirrings are the sexual attractions yeah so he has like his he has like a dream about a girl and they're like you need to start taking this pill and he's like oh cool now i get to take the pill like everyone else yeah um and then he started part way through he stops taking the pill right because it's he's like no it's dumb um anyway so he 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 knows what death is now right he's he's received some memories of that and then he watches the it's basically it's done by injection so he watches his um Oh, family units are another whole thing that's interesting in this book. But he watches his dad, who's like a nurturer, takes care of the babies, have to release to elsewhere one of these babies. And he sees it and he's like, oh, that's that's death. And he's like, that's, he like can't go home that night. Anyway, it's, it's a good part in the book. It's very pivotal. So I've I've got a question about that. Because, so nobody has these memories of death, but his own dad is 
killing, you know, these these babies that need to be released elsewhere, right? Yeah. Does his dad understand that he's killing the babies? Um there is a level of understanding. They kind of talk about it. Um where the giver's like, "Yes, he's he knows he knows, but he also doesn't really get it. He doesn't really understand what death is because again so that's kind of what this is everything that they do in this community they're doing it but they don't really get there's not um actually so it's interesting they use this they use the word twice i notice in important moments in the book first when he's talking about the the, like the lighter eyes he talks about like a depth like that's what makes the eyes different is there's there's like a depth to them almost like looking through like clear water Um, and then later on he's talking about these emotions that he's feeling and the experiences he's having and he talks about how there's a depth in the experiences that he's having and so the experience of everyone else in the community is a very shallow experience where they're going through the motions they're doing those things but they don't really get it Um, right for example i mentioned the family units before they have like they have birth mothers so that their job for three years is to like have a baby one each year um, and then they go and do other job for, for their adult life. Wow. That's a, that's a very taxing job to just, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm going to have a baby once, once a year for however long I'm here. Just no, no, just for three. And then they have them do other jobs. Yeah. Okay. For three years. You have for a three baby years. Year. Okay. They, they're like pampered and then they're, they're just pregnant being taken care of and sure. then have a baby and then have another. And anyway, but then, so, um, so then there's, there's parents in this community at the beginning Jonas talks about his mom and dad but you realize that through the course of the book that they're just as assigned as everyone else and so yeah the elders have assigned you a a mother and a a, you know married partner and then you have a kid but you're assigned a kid from one of the birth mothers and then you can apply for a second one when you feel like you want a second one but you can only have a boy and a girl right so that's controlled too um and so then you apply to have a child and then once your children are of age, then you go and live in the home of like the childless adults, which I had completely forgot about. Okay. Because again, I've seen the movie a lot lately because that's that's what came out. So I reread the book. And I'm like, oh. So and then you go to this home for childless adults, and you're no longer with your spouse. Like you're just you don't really interact anymore. It's it's over. You you've you're done with the parent thing. <laughs> and, okay. And so there's not really Empty that nesters. bond. But yeah, but there's not, but there's not a bond. You're done with each other too. Like it's it's over. There's that shallowness to the relationship and you don't really, like the the children don't really come and visit. They don't really have time. They talk about that later on. Um, And then once you're done, when, when you're done working and you're obviously old and they have a place for the old people who are taken care of, um, but everything's very shallow in, um, in their, in their lives, including their interactions with, with death, those who administer the death or being really for those being released elsewhere yeah so i so i think i understand now it's like all these people they experienced death they saw death but they had no memory of what death meant well and and for the vast majority of the community they just call it being released elsewhere and that's how they understand it yeah um for the for there's the people who take care of the old and the people who take care of the babies and the people who are in charge of like the crime right the the um, the in law enforcement for those who have, you know, messed up more than two times or the, you know, that third time and they're being released elsewhere. Those are the only people who really see it. It's, it's private. It's not for everyone else to see. It's often in a room. They're like being released elsewhere. Yeah. At the beginning of the story, there's an old lady talking about, um, one of the old men that was released to elsewhere and they had this big ceremony and they, they watched a video of his, of life. Cause of course everything's been, been tracked. Right. So they watched like a highlights reel of his life and he's all happy. And he's like, she was like, he looks so happy to be released to elsewhere. And he's like, well, what happens when he gets to release to elsewhere? And she's like, well, I don't know. He just was led through this door, but he was so happy as he was going through the door. Yeah. <laughs> and, and as you're reading, you're like, Oh, that's nice. Like at the beginning. And then you're like, as you reflect back on it, you're like, okay, that's what was really happening. He didn't know. No one really knew. Yeah. Um, people administering it, but it was it was so like such a natural part of what they assumed a normal life was supposed to be. Sure. And it's that's not completely unparalleled by how we kind of view the process of death here either. Oh, uh, in what way do you mean? Uh, I mean in in the in the first way, like the physical way that most people don't 
experience death firsthand very frequently, right? Right. Um, and then in the second way where how, when you explain how she says like, well, he looked happy on his way out, you know, and um, and this isn't to, um, you know, make light of the, the experience of losing a loved one, but a, a lot of times we do want to rationalize uh, that pain into something that is easier to deal with or doesn't hurt as so much. Right. But I think that in this situation, it's not a rationalization. They don't have the pain. There's, they, they try to avoid the feeling of loss. Yeah. They try to pretend that that's basically the whole book is they pretend. Um, but they successfully, they avoid real emotion. Um, yeah. And so, I, I do agree. That's kind of what they're, that, that's, that's kind of like those people who, um, it's, it's very much a form of denial, sure. but it's like a generalized denial that people don't even recognize as denial. I mean, it sounds like in the book, it's an absolute ignorance, right? right? It's not like a willful ignorance. Yeah, but I think book. that, I think that it's, it is different in the sense that we try to deal with our pain, right? We try to deal with the, the hard mm-hmm. things that we face and we work through them. Yeah. And whereas there, they're like, let's just, Let's just skip that whole thing. We don't need to. We don't need to work through feelings and emotions, um, like real emotions. Is is it more of like I, let's skip through it? Like I'm I'm willfully uh, jumping past it, or is it that they have an inability to do so because of the society? It's it's an imposed. Does that make sense? It's an it's an imposed, imposed upon like, them, right? So the gotcha. elders are at, whenever this decision they they talk about back and back and back somewhere in the past, someone made a decision. Well, this is. They don't need to really, they don't need to understand death. Um, they don't need to feel the, the loss and the sorrow that comes with that. Let's just, and then they, that's kind of how, it doesn't show them planning these things, but you can kind of see like, well, this, this human experience um, is hard and unnecessary. Let's, let's figure out a solution for it. So they, that's kind of their solution that's been imposed right upon this community now that they've adopted. Yeah. Um, so for the vast majority, they're ignorant of it. In fact, even the people who are, are, are in charge of enforcing it are still ignorant. That's why they have a receiver of memory because the receiver knows and can give them counsel like, well, because they were, they were talking about there's a part in the story where they're, they're considering increasing the, the, the children limit to three. So they asked the receiver of memory and he's like, well, there was this thing called starvation and like not, and not being able to sustain um, a community because of this that and the other and he's like so it's up to you but you know there's this he's like probably not probably we shouldn't um, but he feels it's interesting because the receiver right has been has been at his job for seems like a couple decades as you're reading it for several decades he's probably yeah. 40 or 50 maybe 60 um, and he's conflicted about his role having been the receiver for so long um, but he has never known what to do about it and so, right. It sounds like that's probably a, a an inevitable conclusion to having such a job. Yeah, being being alone in that awareness. Mm-hmm. You know, so far, um, everything that you've told me. Cause I haven't read The Giver, right? Okay. Um, but everything you've told me about the plot has reminded me of several other different stories, and I actually hadn't linked these stories together until I'm listening to you tell me about The Giver, right? Yeah. Uh, the first one is The Matrix. Okay. Right. So all these people are kind of like in this simulation and they don't realize that there's a whole like real world outside of it. Right. And then once they pull Neo out of the matrix, they give him the choice to go back in the simulation or just stay in the real world, you know, and and that kind of stuff. And so it's like, do I choose to go back into the, this place where everything was almost perfect, but, but I'm ignorant of like the truth. Right. Uh, the second one is (laughs) Wally. Right, because you had all these people living in on, on that ship, and it was like a <laughs> utopia. Right, right. And all the robots were like implementing this procedure or this this policy to keep everybody ignorant of the reality that they could go home and they could work towards like repairing the earth. Right. Um, and the last one is the story of the Buddha, uh, Siddharth Gotama, who he was born in like a palace, and his right. father didn't want him to learn about um, sickness, death, poverty, hunger. Like he didn't want him to learn about all that. And when the Buddha became like a teenager, he started seeing those things as he walked around the outside of the palace 
and became curious about it. And then, you know, eventually dedicated his life to understanding these things. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was because he like grew up in that sheltered environment where people were actively trying to keep him away from suffering that he became so intensely curious and, and focused on it. Right. That, I mean, what do you think about when I bring up those stories in reference to the giver? I think I, th- I think that, that that's what makes something like a story so meaningful is when the themes are are so relevant to so many. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I think that any story that's really worth it is not telling something that people haven't heard before. But they're telling it in a way that really hits them and helps them see it in a new light, right? And so if it makes those connections um I think that that makes I think that's good. I hadn't thought of those connections, but I, so, and I, <laughs> me either. And I'm like, and I'm, I'm, I, yeah. So I think that I think that's that's awesome when those connections are made. Um, and I, I think of a whole bunch of different things as I'm reading this, even in like society today. I think that that's what really books are for, and the whole reason we have literature is making the connections with other people, whether that's in the story or or in your own life, or preferably both. Um. And that idea of trying not the flaws of, of trying to shelter and the flaws of not embracing the reality of, of life, I think is important. Yeah. So. Very cool. Well, uh, Gary, let's take a break now and okay. then we'll come back and keep talking about the giver. Sounds good. Before we left, you were talking about how like the book gets beyond, gets deeper into the real lives of people, like connects with you on on something that's like below the surface, right? Right. Um, earlier, you had talked about how you kind of go on this journey with the character of discovering that there's something beyond like the sameness and, and beyond the life that's being set up by the society. And you said that you experienced that or as a child you experience that with the main character. Right. What is it like to experience that alongside the person who, who actually is in that story? What's really interesting is uh, you're really conflicted. Well, first of all, you just think it's fine. It's just like he does. And um, there's just a lot of stuff and you're like, okay, that's, that's different, but it's, that's just how they do it, you know? And that's just how he does it. And he, He's not comparing it to anything else. And so, um, and they talk about, they talk about things that you, they like they, every morning they talk about their emotions and they're like, well, I, or like at the, actually at the end of the day, they're like, I felt angry today because this kid cut in line. Basically his little sister says that it's like almost exactly what she says. And then first of all, what a healthy practice to do to like, I, you address would, your emotions well at you the end think of the day. <laughs> you think and so and so he's like well she's like well i felt this and then so the parents are like try to give it put it in perspective and so at the beginning it it seems really healthy and very ideal like it yeah. seems ideal as you're reading it um at the end of the book then he's like she didn't feel anger she doesn't know what anger is like <laughs> oh sure um he, and so he's just like again the, the, going back to that shallowness and depth and so at the beginning you you're 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 totally buying into like oh that seems you know that seems pretty good um and then and then as he's conflicted you're conflicted and so you're like oh i don't know like the sun is pretty good but then he has one where he, a memory where he gets a sunburn he's like oh yeah but sunburns are pretty painful uh, and by the end, you realize with him, just like no, like it's we're we're robbing ourselves of 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 real experience, um, and and we're taking things lightly that shouldn't be taken lightly, like death. Um, and and he uh, and like the game of war, he uh, he has a memory of of war, and then he sees his friends playing a game of war, and kind of has a PTSD moment. Uh, a flashback of of this memory that he has and he's like they have no clue they have no clue what they're doing and uh anyway so for for me that journey is just it's 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 eye-opening to um to appreciate the experiences we have in this life even like the crazy hard ones because that's really what he's doing he has really hard memories that become his own that then he 
he's like, well, it makes sense that we got rid of those things, war and hunger and, and pain. Um, and he's like, yeah, that seems really good. And then, but he's like, no, but it's not worth it. And then he's like, it's not worth it to rob ourselves of, of the, the good, the real, like love is one of the big ones that they talk about. Um, it's not worth it to rob ourselves of those experiences, even though we don't have like the, the bad anymore. We need both. Interesting. I, I find it very interesting that you bring up a love um because i wasn't expecting that you're talking about war it's like that makes sense like let's get rid of that but they've gotten rid of love yeah yeah um it's again it's going, going back to the, like the family relationship yes exactly there's no th- there <laughs> he realized he feels love in one of the memories and he realizes what love really is and then he goes home and he's like he asks his parents he's like do you love me and they're like uh precision of language precision of language is kind of like one of the big things they they want to be very precise in what they in what they say relatable and so they're like well but then they they're like precision <laughs> of language jonas like love is like an obsolete word like that doesn't mean anything anymore like are we proud of you yeah like we're proud of your accomplishments like uh-huh. do we want what's best for you yeah we want what's best for you but do we love you that's that doesn't mean anything um that's um i forgot the term that they use um but basically, they they they, just, they kind of write it off, and he's like, "No, it's the most real thing ever." Like sure. his experience with that, and so the fact that they're like, "No, that's not real. It doesn't really. It's so undefinable," and he's like, "It doesn't matter. It's real, and it's it's and it's important." Yeah. So I find myself in this weird place where I agree with both of them, right? Um, I right. I I don't think it's undefinable. I think it's n- n- undefined. But that doesn't mean that it's not real. Right. But if you think about love, though, and the things in our own lives, right? So love can lead to really great experiences, great mm-hmm. relationships. It can also re- lead to really hard things, right? You love someone who then makes choices that are that negatively impact their life or your life. Um, love leads to betrayal of love, right? It leads to uh, passion and, lo- you know, lots of different yeah. things, right? And so... Uh, yeah, so it's interesting because I do, I, I agree and I actually really like the idea of being precise with language. I think language is important to be precise with, yeah. but it's kind of, again, taking those things to the extreme and you realize the, f- what you're really losing. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's interesting. Well, it, I mean, it seems to me like, like they, they recognize that there's a spectrum of existence, like an expansion, a spectrum of almost anything, right? And they found a way to stay always in the middle of that spectrum. Someone back and back and back and yeah. back. And see, that, and I think that's what's interesting is someone, and it doesn't ever talk about the actual history of how this community was formed. But yeah, somewhere back there, you know, back in the past, someone made this decision. Um, and you see the reasoning. The reasoning is pretty clear about the things. And um, the giver, right? He kind of, Jonas is like, well, why did we give... Why did we get rid of, well, what was it? Hit, uh, snow. Because he, he goes... They got goes, rid of snow. They got well, It's climate control. Yeah, they got rid of snow because snow makes it... Oh, and hills. They don't have, actually have hills. So he's like, his first experience is uh, on top of a hill going on a sled down the, or in the snow, right? And so uh, that's one of the first memories he... Actually, the first memory that he gets. And so he's like, what's... So he doesn't know what snow is or a sled or the hill, Um or the the runners of the sled is the other word that I think he learns. But the the with snow, they get rid of snow because snow impacts the ability to transport food, and so the vehicles can't move in the snow. And they got rid of hills because it's impractical too, right? So it's it's flat and same and weather controlled. That's another piece of it. Um, and so like, the, but the reasoning's there. You make it makes sense. Like, get rid of snow because it impacts our ability to operate. Sure. I mean, so I've never been out there, but it sounds like instead of getting rid of hills, they could have just moved to the American Midwest, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's true. Well, I mean, me, and that that might be what they did. They might have not have gotten rid of hills, but where they where they've sure their entire existence, right, is is confined to this this space, yeah, this community. And so he does actually leave that area and go. Mm, spoiler again. Uh, to he he gets to a hill in, in the end. Cool. Um, and so. So it, they didn't like get rid of hills. So I don't know if they like, I don't sure. know where they are. If they actually like, I mean, they did that in Seattle though. I don't know if you know the history of Seattle very much, but Seattle was a lot hillier than it is. And they leveled some hills. It still looks hilly to me. So I know, I but they leveled the ones closer to like where like downtown, they like leveled yeah. those and brought the water down or the, 
the dirt down and yeah, filled it in. There's wow. like a whole other hill that they <laughs> took down. Anyway, I don't think, I don't know <laughs> if they did that or if they just <clears throat> built where there wasn't hills. Sure. So th- that gives me a thought. Um, and I, and I wonder if you, if it'll spark anything for you. Um, when I think of life, I think of it as being kind of a changing process, like the circle of life, so to speak, right? Um, But when the whole point of this society that they have is to eliminate changes and eliminate differences, um, do you think the author has any sort of commentary on whether or not they're truly living? I I think it's, it's very much insinuated that the experiences they're having are not really experiences that that are meaningful um that they go through all of the it's like the checklist they go through the checklist of a life right they they grow up they get a bicycle they uh volunteer in the community they get a job they have a family they all the boxes are checked um but yeah i think that 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 is one of the things i would say um in reading that it's, it's very heavily implied that it's not they're not really having those experiences right it's a shallow existence i don't know if it, i would go as far as they're not living they're they're living <laughs> yeah um, but it's a shallow everything is shallow okay it, it's almost like the the way that they've gone about setting up their life essentially removes the meaning from it though yeah so like i i exist but there's no meaning in that existence anyway right. and they think that there is it's in, that's what's interesting too they're like well i'm doing this and uh I think in our own society, a lot of people define themselves by the same things that the characters in the in the story are defining themselves by. Well, like, well, I have, I'm doing this job. Like, this is who I am, and this is my, I'm contributing in this way. Um, or I am raising these two children, and this is, I'm, I'm contributing in this way. And so I think that it does more than just talk about how their lives are shallow, but I think it can, it, it points out that there's a shallowness that can exist even in our community or even in our society outside of the book for me, I, for me, that's, that's kind of what it, it points out is that there's um, even if it's not a controlled environment, like it is in the book, there's, we still need to be aware that limiting ourselves and living a shallow existence is, is flawed. The idea of love. There's a lot of people I think that even that question love in the same way that they, that, um, that the characters do in the book, right? They're like, well, I mean, yeah, love is love is good, but you know, it's not really, a th- you know, I don't know. I think that that's 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 a common thing, even without being have that having that imposed on you in a community. Yeah, I mean, e- even I have a little bit of like um, uh, ambivalence talking about you know the the argument that you brought up between the, or I guess it wasn't an argument, but the conversation about love in the book. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I feel a little bit on both sides of that question. It's it's a conversation worth having, absolutely, right? Right. Well, I, yeah, and, and I think that that's I think that that's one of the things um, that the book points out is a lot of the things that are. So they talk about how at the beginning he's chosen as the receiver, and he says that they're like, you have the you have the the skills that you need. You have, um, I forgot what they all were. Um, basically like he does, he does well in his classes. Like he, he doesn't break the rules. And if he does, he kind of, he, he realizes it and makes up for it. Uh, he's like, uh, accountable. Um, he has courage, they say. Um, and he's like, and they, and he, they're like, you don't have this yet, but you will. And it's the, the, like the, the skill of wisdom, like having wisdom. Okay. And so they bring up wisdom as another thing where you get, where without having the experiences, you don't really have wisdom. You're just kind of going through the, the jumping through, through, through the hoops. And so that gets brought up later in the book too, about whenever they need wisdom, they go to the receiver for, for, for counsel. Be- because that's the only person that has experience that has to be able to give wisdom. Experience. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think that wisdom is another one of those things where, okay, how do you define wisdom? Cause you can have two people can have the same experience and one of them can end up wise and the other one not, you know? And, yeah. um, and so what really defines wisdom? What really defines love? What really defines a lot of those undefinable words, those ambiguous words? Um, we don't really have solid definitions for them but they're still really real. And I think that that's what the book gets at is that they're, they're real and they're important 
even if we can't define them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That that actually, so it makes me question a, a couple of things, right? Because like, for the most part, you and I are kind of jiving here and, and, on, and on the same page about how we feel about the topic that's being presented. Right. Um, so I think about, it seems like the, the book's kind of making this case that if you remove love and you remove hate or whatever the, you know, the opposite is, and you're kind of stuck in this place in the middle, uh, you remove the meaning from it, right? Um, I don't see any issue with that. But the question I'm kind of having is, so we live in a world where hate and love have not been removed. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that I experience one end of that spectrum and it remains meaningless? Uh, yeah. Well, and I think that, I think that that's, I think the, the, I think that it is important. Like in the book, he, they, they talk about both, right? Um, Jonas is like, well, let's just bring back love. No, he, he's like, no, we need a, all of it. It's all important. Yes. Um, yes. And I think that, yeah, I, th- I think that anytime that we try to ignore the other half of that, right, we, we miss out on. So if we, if we try to eliminate all, um, like, hey, oh, this is, this sounds bad because obviously we want to eliminate hate, right? We don't want hate. But if we, if we really were to, to like forcibly try to remove hate from the world, we'd, we'd be diminishing in our love a little bit. Yeah. Right? Or at least, at least a little bit, maybe a lot of it. It, it um, almost seems like the yin and yang kind the, of issue there where if I yeah. don't know what not love is, then I can't know what love is. Right. Well, and, and then again, and forcibly removing hate, doesn't that actually diminish? You know what I mean? Like right. the, the, the ability so that, that someone has to choose um, their feelings and, and what they what they do mm-hmm. um, is important. And so if you're taking that away from them, even you know just their own opinions away from them, are you really loving them as much as you could yeah um and so i think it is important to have both sides and i think that that's um the end of the book i don't want to get too much into it um but jonas has experiences um real experiences for the first time um oh, not cool. just memories like his own experiences his own and that it hit me this time um that he has his own experiences um and so he he experiences um not not necessarily hate but but pain and love those are kind of the ones that he, that they focus on most in the book um the pain and and love and somehow they, they don't it's interesting cause they, i feel like they don't set up love and hate they set up pain and love and it's it's interesting i think that's fair yeah. I, I i don't it doesn't have to be hate for it to I know, be i know but the i just <laughs> i i'm just thinking about that right now yeah. so sorry i'm lost in my thoughts with that um and so he he goes through pain and 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 fear and and a lot of those emotions um and then some love too which is which is helpful that's really cool um so yeah it's it, it ends with with both not just like hey we're missing out on love we're missing out on real experience okay um so th- this is a question for you in answer to whatever level you're comfortable have you ever had an experience where you felt like Oh my gosh, I'm having my own experience for the first time. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm trying to to think. Um going on like so the idea of well, mm, there's like a lot to it. That I don't know. I th- I th- I think I think the idea of loving, and I, I won't get into specifics of of it, sure. but I think specifically with loving, I think that that's something that I um, have learned and continue to learn. Is that when you're a kid, you're just like, oh, I love this person. They're fun. They're nice. I like them. You know, I want to be around them. Yeah. Or they do nice things for me, so I love them. And I think as I got older and interacted with people, and they made their own j- decisions, and I. Um, um, and just life happens, um, people go move or people, whatever they do, right. There's lots of things that, um, that change a relationship, right. And, and your, and your closeness with someone, um, but you still love them even when there's, there's like a pain that's associated with that love and there's, and it's, but it's still valuable to have that love. Right. So yeah, as a little kid, I remember moving for the first time and you're like, Oh no, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave all my friends. And that's, um, I actually moved quite a bit as a little, as a kid. And so, <clears throat> but I remember one time in particular, uh, I was like just old enough to really like be like, Oh no, we're moving. 
away from these people that I that I care about, my friends, yeah. right? And so, um, so the love brought the 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 loss of of having to move away. And I think that that's the same thing that I've that we can I continue to experience as an adult, whether it's people moving away or people making different decisions or not wanting to have me in their life as much or just normal life. You know what I mean? There's that's, that just happens. Um, not usually, I don't, I haven't had too many experiences where it's like aimed, (laughs) aimed distancing from me, but (laughs) sure. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I don't think I have, uh, they weren't very obvious about it if they would, if they did, but just this idea of, um, of this experience of love, it's like a real, it's, it's, it's different love than what you think as a kid. Um, sure. It's a realer, a realer love. Um, loving in the face of adversity. Yeah. I, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, you know, this, I, I don't want to go too far into my own personal experience um, either, but uh, I just think specifically about like people that I love in spite of the fact that I don't like them. Um, people who like when I was a child, for example, might not have been very good friends or very kind to me. Uh, they're still the kind of people that today I would love to meet them and talk to them and see how they're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so likewise, I, I kind of feel the the, similar to, to what you just described or what I understood from what you described. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's take another break and we'll come back and continue talking about the giver. Sounds good. All right, so this is a little bit of like insight behind the curtain here at the <laughs> Left on Red podcast. Um, every time we take a break, uh, I take a minute to like regroup with the guest, and I also export the audio just to make sure that I don't screw anything up because I'm so amateur at this uh, this audio engineering thing. Um, and so after I export it, I go through and I just make sure that some of the waveforms like sound good when I when I scrub through them. And as I was going through, I hit a spot um, where right when I clicked play on it, uh, I hear Gary's voice saying, do you love me? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it made me laugh because, you know, it's so, so funny to like hear that, right? Without any context behind it. Um, but I was kind of thinking that that is exactly the kind of thing that I, that, the kind, that's exactly the kind of phrase I want to hear on this podcast, because I really think that all people want to know the answer to that question. And I think the the actions that people take and the things that people say, they do express that phrase, um, even if we're too afraid to ask that question directly. Right. Right. And I think these stories kind of show us that about ourselves as well. Do so here's here's what I was thinking over the break. The people that that aren't receivers, the people that don't have memories. Right. Do they want to be loved even if they think that love is a dumb concept? Um, that is a good question. I'm trying to think of specific things from the book. Um, I think that they have... I feel like they, they, never, they never feel a lack. They don't, I don't think they have a specific desire to be loved, right? This is the first time that Jonas has asked them, do you love me? Um, because everything else has been suppressed. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know if they have, I think again, it's, it's that shallowness and it's not just a shallowness in what they're able to give, but in what they're able to receive from others too, um, where they're, they're content with, um, with not being really loved, being like appreciated. They want to, they don't want, they don't want people to point out, you know, to be rude to them. They want people to be polite. Um, but they don't, they don't really, they don't really feel a lot, a lack of love, right? They, they, when like, again, the, the parents, right. They have, a, they have that relationship and then they go off and they, they don't. And so the, and the, the children don't seek them out again. Once they, once they leave the house, they don't have that desire to, they, they pretty clearly say that they're, they're going to be pretty busy doing their own things. They're not going to, they're not going to f- find that. And so, and there's no parents seeking out the children right that's i think a thing in our society where you know the children when they become adults become 
caught up in their own world, but the parents still right want to be a part of their life and sometimes are neglected. But there's in the book, there's not either of those things. There's not a child wanting attention and love from their parent, and there's not an aging parent wishing their children and grandchildren would be with them. They don't right. have either of those, and they're they're fine with it. So I mean, it's like that. I, I want to cut out the bad part, um, but as a result, I kind of cut out the good part as well, right? So you have like the child who doesn't want to feel like they've disappointed their parents, right? Or like doesn't doesn't want the I guess, yeah, I guess it's just like the feeling of disappointing the parents and you don't want like the, the parent who has a sense of loneliness or whatever when they've lost, um, I guess, that, that close bond to the child and the child goes off and becomes its own person. Right. Um, but then you sacrifice everything that comes along with having a relationship with an individual. Yeah. Um, I guess that's kind of the catch 22 of this whole, of the whole premise of the giver, right? Right. Um. So the the question that or the the kind of doubt that I have about it is a lot of times when we look at our own story we I mean the the only ability that we have is to see our story from our own perspective. Right. And so we don't have any insight into the minds of the other characters in our story, right? Um I'm sure in the book you probably get some like um internal dialogue from um from well, Jonas. From Jonas. Yeah. So the the doubt that I have is that we don't get any internal dialogue from the parents or from other members of the society. Is it possible that they truly do enjoy, in spite of the fact that it seems like they can't enjoy anything, do they really enjoy living in that society or do they face their own internal conflicts even though they don't have access to like vicarious memories? Well, and I think that the book addresses that in a couple different ways. Okay. I think, first of all, because it shows Jonas's internal dialogue at the beginning, you get the contrast from where when he, you know, what what his dialogue was like before versus what it becomes. Um, and I think that that's one of the ways. And then also just through dialogue, as he learns something, he he always takes it to, he's not supposed to, but he always, he takes it to someone who's like, well, he like tries to get his friends to see color or he tries to ask his parents about love, uh, or he, you know, this, that, and the other. He, he's, he's trying to share this, this, these things that he has with, with others, and there's not a reaction to it. There's not everyone. Everyone's like, nah. There's no. There's no. At least for, again, it is from Jonas, Jonas's perspective. So there, there's a potential for there to be more in fact in the film adaptation they tried they add some more oh, cool. internal yeah um in the film adaptation i actually um i know that this is about the book sure but just a side note on the film a lot of people even stylistically when i first saw the film i was like this is going to be garbage but then <laughs> i uh, i watched it and it adds some really it makes them a little bit older it adds like a little bit of a romance well there's a little bit of one in this one but it kind of works it builds it a little bit more and it shows more of the conflict um, that the that the other community members would face. Um, yeah, and I um I actually really really appreciate the film um, as much as I do the book, which is in a it's some, somewhat of a different way. But the 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 um I think the key themes are expressed really powerfully in the film. Um, so to your question about that internal conflict, there is a little bit more of that in the film. And I think that in reality, if, if this kind of society existed, there would be um, just kind of that an innate, because I, I, I think as humans, we have this innate sense that there's supposed to be something more that we're experiencing. Yeah. Um, and so I think that even if you were trying to, trying to suppress it, that there would be, that there would be something, there'd be more, um, and I think it would manifest differently and more powerfully in some than others. But I think that there would be more of an internal conflict than than the book shows. Right. Yeah. I I think that's fair. Um, I would I would want to grant that possibility to the other characters, and and I assume that in the book, as much as they've tried to, as the the authors tried to capture some of that, um, there's still a part of it that's like we haven't given them their fair shot to like explain themselves these other characters right right well a lot of it is just is is jonas recognizing in them that they have just such a higher capacity to to be and exist than what they realize right and so 
everyone else again it's not like they've bought into this flawed ideology yeah it's been imposed on them Mm -hmm. and they just don't know it and so i think that that's i think that's what makes it interesting and so the whole point at the end um again spoiler i'm going to spoil the whole so just so just so you know know. spoilers are totally allowed i know i just like (laughs) to say spoiler i want people to be prepared and you know what i mean like yeah sure i don't you know i yeah i want to it's good i know they're allowed yeah just so you know (laughs) um so at the end he he leaves the community thus releasing all the memories to the community the giver stays back so he can help them work through those things just like he helped jonas work through those those experiences and those memories okay so the whole the whole the whole point that jonas has is that he he knows he could like you were saying like when he sees those around him he he feels like they should have this in them the same thing that he has this desire to to see color or to um to love and he's just not getting it and he's like he doesn't know how to to share it with them and that's one of that's one of the things that frustrates him so much is is his his desire to share it with them um and the the worthwhileness of those things okay very interesting so his solution to the issue that he sees and i guess like the the culmination of all of his conflict is to pass that on to everybody else yeah um is to to allow them to have like a depth of experience in their lives um and to really understand what they're doing um and the thing that puts it over the top um is is when he sees the again the babies being released from elsewhere realizes that they don't know what they're doing and then there's a there's a baby that he anyway, that he has had an attachment with through the through the through the course of the story that his his father's again a nurturer he's it, the baby's been in the home um and the baby is set to be released elsewhere and Jonas is like nope <laughs> and takes yeah. the baby leaves and realizes first of all that they don't know what they're doing to this baby so yeah. i need like he he takes that upon himself and uh, he's like, I'm going to take care of this baby. Um, and he's actually, uh, the baby has pale eyes just like Jonas. And so he's sure. actually, he's been able to pass on some of the things to the baby, even though, again, not supposed to. I um, mean, he sees, he's seen this impact, this positive impact in this baby's life, even being an infant. And so, and so he, he, I, he he's realized that it's important um, that there's, um, that he shares those things and that, that their lives would be better although initially very, very hard to work through and face those things, those memories of, of things that have been done away, that would be valuable. Okay. So now that you say that he passed on some memories to the baby, like I, like passing them on to like the general population, um, that, makes, that makes sense. Um, passing it on to the baby it makes me start to have some questions. Um, I mean, same questions that I would have with him passing them on to anybody, but specifically because it's a baby. What are some of the implications of passing on essentially pain, right? Well, no. So he, he, he chooses what he passes on. Okay. So he passes on. So the baby doesn't sleep through the night um, and the baby is not doing well in the the care facility, right? So the, the father's taking the baby home um, and is trying to basically get the, the baby to sleep through the night. Yeah. And, um, and so... It's like not working and not working and not working. So Jonas is, realizes one night, he's like, well, let the baby sleep in my room. Um, and so he gives him like a calming feeling of, I, I forgot which memory he passes on, but something that's like calming. Like a motherly. A truly, yeah. yeah, a true emotion, a true connection that's calming to the baby and the baby's able to sleep through the night. Um, and the baby, um, in the end, basically, with, they're not able to give this baby love and real and like address the baby's real needs. And so what they see in the flaw of as a flaw of the baby of not being able to be comforted right is actually a flaw in themselves in their society that they can't provide that emotional that real emotional support that this baby needs. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you how relatable that is. <laughs> um and and actually earlier kind of when I was talking about I was like, well it seems like, you know, uh jonas isn't isn't being fair to all these other people like that you know they don't know any better or maybe they're happy or he hasn't taken any time to understand them um it's probably 
a little or a lot of projection on projection from my end, right? Like, like thinking like I now know this one thing, um, and I think we all go through this when we get like a a semester of okay, philo- like this college is real. philosophy. Yeah, I totally know what you're talking about already. Yeah, and and you you come home and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you know you would do this or you would do that. I'm so woke now, and you feel like you, yeah, you see through everyone's. You're like, oh, you're doing that because yeah, this, that, and, and the other. And you villainize everybody else who doesn't know this one thing that you know. But you know, the, the truth is like everybody has their own value that they can give. So like these people who are, who are blaming this baby for like, how dare you not be able to be comforted? Right. And they're trying. Like they're not yeah. like, but yeah, it is. Uh huh. But I mean, and it's Essentially, not, it, that's it's what not like a fault of theirs, but it's that like the baby's not able to be comforted because you're not comforting the baby. <laughs> right. Not because the baby is doing anything wrong. Right. Right. Um, and I, I, that's kind of what I was also feeling earlier when I was like, but we're we're kind of judging these people and I've already learned the hard way that I should not be judging them because I've been wrong so many times, you know? Right. And so, I mean, that's, that's the thing. Like he, I think it is natural though, to have that frustration, especially when, um, there's something that you have learned and that you understand and that people are unwilling to understand like a perspective that they're unwilling. And obviously they don't, I don't think that everyone has to agree with you. And I, I, Jonas doesn't necessarily want him, everyone to agree with him, but he, he wants to have their eyes opened and it's frustrating when, when people choose not to it's it. And I think that that's um, a, a permissible emotion to have and trying to then think you're better than others. Right. That that's kind of where that's when it becomes negative when you try to hold that over other people. Um, but it goes back to the idea of love is when you love someone, um, sometimes there's pain, sometimes there's frustration. Um, I love you. I want you to be able to do this thing that's going to make you happy, yeah. but you don't want to do it. Just yeah. do it. And I, um, and so, yeah, I think that that's, that's it. there's a lot to that, but that's all. I mean, navigating the, like what, what you've been calling like real experience is a difficult thing. And right. so I, I appreciate that. Like, there's no, there's no real answer I, in my, in my opinion, there's no real answer to what you should do when it comes to these gray areas. It's right. not black or white. Well, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, it, it's not black or black or white and your perception of it is limited to what you know. So you could be wrong, even though every intention you have is, is a good one. Right. Which is where, um, I think in the book you're like well the giver has been in this has been in his role for so long and so you're almost like well why hasn't he done something before um because he right he knows so much better than than them and jonas kind of questions he's like well why like this is wrong why are we why are we doing this and the giver's like well and he kind of has assessed that for himself right he's like i know that i know these things that um, that I have a better understanding, that I have this wisdom, right, that yeah. these people don't have. I know that. Um, but if I were to leave and just throw this all on them, I don't think that they'd be able to work through it. They don't know what to do with these things. Right. And so, um, and I think that that's the case, right, when we when we come back fresh from college, right, or whatever, <laughs> you know, from a, from a psychology, you know, um, there has to be a willingness, but I think that, you can't just impose it on, on others because um, they don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to do with the things that, that, that you think are important, right? That maybe for them, it's not, it's not for them in that moment. Right. And so I don't know, I feel like I'm talking in circles, but no, um, basically, so at the end though, right. So they, there's two of them, right. So the Jonas can go and the giver can stay and help. And I think that both of those things are, are important, right. Being, being willing to, to kind of do what you know is best for others, uh, but also be there to support them through in as much as you can. Yeah. It, are there always two, two people like this? The I giver mean, usually there's one and it's just while well, the other one's in training. Right. So, okay. yeah. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense why, um, like he wouldn't, the, the older, the giver wouldn't have said anything, uh, because the opportunity to do that would have happened while he was still young. And, and he, then it just didn't click. Yeah. And then eventually he would have been on his own. Right. Mm-hmm. But it is there like, is he granted any sort of opportunity to explain why he doesn't tell the people the truth? 
Um, yeah, actually, we were talking about this during the break. Um, yeah. This this part in the in the book. I'll actually read a quote. Okay. Um, so they're talking about sharing a specific memory. And Jonah says, but why can't everyone have the memories? I think it would seem a little easier if the memories were shared. You and I wouldn't have to bear so much by ourselves if everyone took a part. Um, and so this is kind of his, Jonas's more selfish side. This was a painful memory that they were discussing. And the giver sighed. You're right, he said. But then everyone would be burdened and pained. They don't want that. And that's the real reaser, reason the receiver is so vital to them and so honored. They selected me and you to lift that burden from themselves. Um. And so it's interesting, right? So that they they bear a burden. And so I think initially when when you're selected, and even Jonas, he realizes he first it's an honor. It's a, it's something that he needs to take upon himself. And to be like, no, I don't want to bear that burden, or no, you guys should bear that burden yourself, feels selfish. Um, and so I think that that's just one of the reasons that it took him a while to realize there's there's a selfishness to it. And like not wanting to bear the burden. And so you're conflicted about re- right whether they want to really, um, whether you want to keep trying to bear that burden for others or whether you realize that it's better for them to bear their own burdens. Yeah. Um, but again, going back to the love, I think that's a, that's a really thing that we have to, to consider whether it's, it's better to be bearing someone's burden or if it's better for them to, to bear their own burden and to have those experiences that they can learn from. I think I I even think that's like clearly uh, having your own experience is very valuable. Um, But to some extent, I do understand like wanting to remove some burdens from from others. Well, I mean, yeah, I think bearing one another burden, bearing one another's burdens is absolutely uh, important. But think about like a parent with a child. Yeah. If if you never let your child actually make the decision, that's going to lead to a negative consequence. You like, you know, what's going to happen, right? If they um if they do whatever it is um but if you never allow them that freedom then they then they don't really grow yeah no that's fantastic that thank you so much for for telling me ab- about the giver it's a very interesting story with a lot of uh, i think moral questions that um i love a book that gets into like that space in between right or wrong and presents it in, presents it in a way that makes it difficult to answer. Yeah. Um, because for me, that is life, right? Yeah. Um, well, Gary, this has been, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been awesome. Thank you. Um, I do have two questions for you. The two questions that I ask everybody that comes on. The first one is if you had to rate the giver, um, but however you want to rate it and, and compare it to the literature of time, how would you rate it? Um, I, I would just rate it highly. Um, but I, again, we talked about this at the very beginning. I think that there's, there's other stories that, that speak to similar themes. And so, I mean, I rate it really highly. I think it's a really accessible one. And so, um, I think for trying to give the point across for me in my own life, it's like a solid 10. Every time I read it, there's something else and I'm, I question more. So 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 for me, just cause it's, there's always more. And I think that that's what makes a good, I'm not very picky, but I, I feel like that's what makes good literature is something that gives you something every time you read it. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and then for, for all, all of us who haven't read it, is there anybody you would recommend the book to? Well, if you like a sheltered life, a shallow life. <laughs> I guess you don't have to read the book. But if you really no, I <laughs> I uh I, I I just I think that um it's important for anyone that is Yeah, I I don't think that there's anyone that I would exclude from from wanting to read the book. I think um if you're dealing with the idea of loving others and some of the pain that goes with that, I think The Giver is a really powerful book. Um and I think that most of us have experiences or should have experiences where we're, we love those around us and we, we don't know exactly what to do that's best for them. And this, this book, like we said, doesn't just give you the answer. It's not, it's not like, and the moral is, um, but it helps you reflect on those things. So anyone who, um, who's trying to do right by those they, they care about. Um, and I, they teach it in schools. They teach it again. I've heard a lot of like, elementary schoolers that again it's assigned reading i actually don't 
think it's the best book for uh, elementary school. Sure. Um, just because it's there's not I don't know I I feel like um I feel like there's a lot more to it and I would want someone reading it not to be like oh yeah there's that boring book that I read as a kid I want it I, I think that someone I think it's so older I think it's 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 marketed to to kids even the the front says kids book maybe maybe some kids are ready for it but yeah I just remember there's there's a few moments I was like this is just weird stuff. <laughs> So sure, it might be it might be a little mature for for some younger readers, but um, but I just yeah, and again, anyone who's who's really just trying to figure out um how to love and what love really means doesn't give a definition, but it's it's in there somewhere. Very cool. All right, well, um, for those of you uh, listening at home, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you would like to follow or connect with the podcast, we are on Twitter at Left on Red Books, on Instagram at Left on Red Books Podcast. Uh, you can also find us on Goodreads. And thank you so much for joining us. Gary, thanks for being with me today. Thank you. And thank you for telling me about your favorite book. It's great. Thank you. <laughs>